Ooh, what's going on YouTube? It's Donnie B all day. Got a visitor. So I just want to go over um, real quick a couple knives that I have um, coming up for review. Still, I have this one that stays right here in front of me the entire time. That's that Carnivora um, Ocelot. Um, I'm waiting to get that one in. I have to. What's in my pocket today? Oh, it's not going to be a surprise to a lot of people. My Essie Avispa. Dude, what's up, man? What's up, girl? So, I got this girl just not wanting to leave me alone. So, um, the, uh, the knife um, raffle. There's about to be a whole lot of winners. Very happy people um, to everybody who joined the raffle. I want to say thanks for um, joining the raffle. But, um, I mean, it, it's it's like a gamble. It's cool. It's actually you have a chance to win some really cool stuff. So I, I, really, uh, I really like that. It's so much better than handouts. So um, I hope that uh, winners win. Um, you know, well, winners do win. But I hope that people who deserve a win, which is, I mean, anybody who entered really, um, get that win. There's going to be a bunch. So that's good. Um, before anything else, I still have, um, this smash it going. Uh, it's that two piece and I had it going for 50 bucks. I'm going to lower this to 45. It's a two piece. I still have that, that awesome case. And I think I had that for 80. Um, oh, and the, uh, Smith and Wesson, Smith and Wesson for, uh, 25 bucks. I'll bring it down to 20 bucks. For the Smith and Wesson, that's an awesome knife. Um, so that'll be good. Actually, as a matter of fact, let's do this. Let's make this a combo. Let's take this at forty-five, and this at twenty would make it sixty-five. Um, we'll go sixty for both. That is a really, really good deal. So if you want that sixty for both, now let's get on to the video in hand. So the pierces who I think, um, by just looking at the immediate numbers, I think I have to mail this to him. I, I think that um, that they have put in the most um, raffle tickets. So, I'll find out. I don't know that 100% yet, but I do believe so. I'm looking a little better, man. I'm looking a little better. I told... I, I, I told... Uh, um, I told them, I said, I think you guys just paid for my meds for like a whole month pretty much um by getting those raffle tickets but what he had done is he had a couple blades i believe made for him from the kukri house and uh there's gonna be this one this looks like a uh buffalo horn handle is what i'm guessing um i have to find out all the specs on it but it's got that um that texas buoy shape almost like the longhorn buoy shape it's kind of got that. Now, I want to find out from him what the little groove here is for because so far I have no idea. Um, I'm trying to figure it out. But he's got this little groove right here. And uh, before I do the review, I want to get everything, like his thought on this and what it was. What I can say is that it fits great in the hand. That is a comfortable knife. It's got a sweet little sheath. I mean, it's just... K-H-H-I all day long. This is nice. Um, and I do believe, unless it's not K-H-H-I, but it sure seems like it. But I do believe these are both Kukri House. Um, and then the other one is kind of like their Scourge buoy, only different. So, or Scourge uh, Kukri. Look at where the belly sits compared to your center line. Your center line is here, right? So a lot of times when you pop a knife... You see the center line to where the tip is, how it goes through. This one is completely different. Um, this thing is way down here. Even on the ocelot, you can see the center line. This is just above center. Center's right here. This one curls up, but it's not that far away. This thing, and being a kukri, obviously the tip is going to drop, but what happens is a lot of times on a kukri, it'll come and then it'll go and then it'll go and the, the center line will still be up around here 
this one is dropped like a full half inch below a normal kook. So what I can say automatically is that this thing, the downward striking on this is going to be ridiculous. Forward striking, it's a little off center, but because of the belly weight, it carries. So it's actually carrying pretty straight. I'll get more into it. Um, what I can say is that the distilled taper on this is magnificently done. You can see right here to right here the difference in in thickness. That takes the weight and you centralize a lot of the weight before your your front weight. So it really helps create a better mean um, than it would have had if they just made it straight through. The balance would have wouldn't have been so so chop right so by doing that they did a really good job in counterbalancing to make sure that you still had a good good swing coming down um your recovery weight's going to be a little jacked up but your swing the most important part for a kukri is going to be that that impact swing so you can chop that's where you're getting your that's where you're getting your business and it's a semi-sharpened swedge i don't know i think this is pretty nice I think this is pretty, that, it's just crazy how far that thing dips. That is crazy. For some guys, they would say, oh, look at that. It, it goes to the left. Some say it goes to the right. The sad guys, we go straight down. Um, but yeah, so far, uh, so far, just my initial thought on this. I think this is pretty cool. I think it's pretty cool. So we're going to get into those. Um, I have to get those two. I have to get the ocelot in. I still have those um, frost blades, all that that whole combat series. Um, I have to get those in. Um, Nathan, uh, thank you for letting me check these out. Um, Sabo, I got your butterflies ready to go. Um, and somebody asked me about this one, and I have to say, man, I have a, a, a list of knives that are like unsellable for me. Um, ones that I just, I can't, I just can't get rid of. And, um, the, uh, C, uh, CRKT Batum, this is the large size. Um, this is something that it's a little tank and they're really super hard to find in really good condition. Um, I seen two for sale and they were in good condition, but they weren't as nice as this one. Um, and, and he asked me if it would be for sale and it pained me to say no because I could really, you know, use to get things moving. But, I don't know, there's there's some knives. I'm going to do a video of my unsellable knives. And uh, this is going to be in that video along with the Avispa in my pocket. Um, I just can't. I just can't, man. I just can't. There's one that I'm thinking about possibly selling. And that's this one. I don't know, though. This is an original Masters of Defense knife an auto open mod um this one is sweet and i have two others that are gonna sell that i'm gonna put up that i haven't put up yet if people are interested um i think i still have the original boxes for these two um these were you know the ultimate tactical knives is what they were called mod's are extremely sought after um after the company closed somebody else bought out the mod name but not it, they're not masters of defense knives but these are two original knives these I'm, I'm not gonna lie these are not cheap um there's this one that will be going it's a plunger lock um it, it's i mean you got your little window break this is the ultimate like emt police fire type you know somebody who's in recovery and rescue that's that knife and then there is this one um, it's got a little, uh, I think it does have a little lock on it, I believe, or yeah, right there. There's a little lock that goes up and down. Um, that's actually a, a nice lock, but this is even printed. Um, but these two, these two I'm thinking about letting go. And it's hard because there's certain knives, like if you look at the, um, uh, the Ontario blades, I just sold, I think every Ontario knife I had and the people who bought them got a really good deal since, um Ontario is out of business now. So because of that, those knives are going to go up in value. These knives are way up in value. Now this one has a little a little play right here where the the stop pin is. Um 
and still, still with a little bit of play, these are extremely sought after. Um, I could probably just tighten it down though. Um, but uh, man, these knives, the um, the plunger locks on them are really good and tight. Uh, they're just high, high value knives. They're very, very sought after. Um, and it's literally almost impossible to find them. So when I do sell these two, they might be the only two for sale on the planet. Um, these are extremely hard to find. I'm actually going to put those over there because I have to get ready. I have to get ready. I have to think of a price. They're not cheap. But for knife collectors, you know exactly what that is. And this one, oh, I just really love this knife. I love this knife. Um, that is a, uh, that's a Buku Bucks knife right there. Buku Bucks knife, which I'm not sure. I'm not sure. The other two, I can let go. <sighs> that one crossed my heart. Hope not to die. Um, so, so that's it. So, uh, the two knives from Nathan Pierce, um, and then all the other stuff. The rest of the knives, if I didn't show you, it's because they sold. So, if you're wondering about some of the other knives from the knife sale, um, I'm also not only going to be doing a video, speaking of Nathan Pierce, on the Aparo, but I'm going to do two videos on this because I want to do a head-to-head -head with this with the Kisley R. I don't know if you guys remember that Kisley R hollow handle knife. It's probably one of my all-time favorite knives. Um, size, shape, everything, it's very, very close to this knife. So I think they are going to um, grant themselves a good versus type thing. Um, which I'm happy to do because I think that's going to be an awesome video. So I have that to do. Um, I believe that's it. Again, uh, good luck to everybody in the raffle. Um, and with my knife sales, remember my knife sales, especially there, there is no, um, there is no cheap. I, I mean, uh, there is no, uh, not cheap, um, what do you call it, a uh, handout. It's, if you buy a knife from me, you're getting a knife and you're getting a good price. I'm actually gonna sell this one. This was um, an original Batman prop knife. Boop. Um, and I know I probably shouldn't have used it because it was a Batman prop knife, but I used the hell out of this. Um, this is a cool OTF. Um, I got this a long time ago uh, from a collector who actually worked on the Batman series. Uh, they held the knife to uh, Mary Jane's neck. Is that Mary Jane? No, that's Spider-Man. Whoever the girl is. Um, but they held it to her neck and in the movies. And this is one of the prop knives. So, very cool. But it's not just a prop knife. This is actual, the actual, like, real cutting knife. Um, who was it? Two-Face, I believe? Or Joker? It was either Two-Face or the Joker had this knife in one of the movies. And they had a bunch of them for the movie, and I ended up getting one. But I'm going to sell this one. Um, I have to think of a price on that because it's cool. I don't have a COA saying it was a Batman knife, so it's not going to be priced like it's got a COA. Um, thing is, I know what it is. You'll know what it is. And it's got some punch. That's a really cool OTF. Um, so I got that going, but we'll figure all of it out. All right. So that's it for this one. I am Donnie B all day till next video.